Welcome to the Go Go Grow podcast, where we share practical advice and growth strategies for scaling B2B businesses. My name is Dasha Tishlik, and I'm the founder of StratCraft. I work with founders and leaders to advance their revenue and value objectives by implementing strategic planning and operational excellence into their businesses. My name is Michelle Page, founder of Sales Chasers. I partner with clients to generate more revenue through sales, marketing, and customer success strategies. This helps grow their client base and stop revenue leaks. Welcome to Go Go Grow. Our first guest of our first season is Marius Dobrin. He's the president of Sawgrass Finance and is responsible for leading the company's business development and growth strategy, strategic planning, private credit market research, borrower relations, and marketing. Marius is passionate about helping entrepreneurs succeed with their small businesses and grow them faster. And he's really active in the Jacksonville community here. He is participating and leading in organizations, including Grow FL, First Coast Manufacturing Association, as well as the Association for Corporate Growth of North Florida, the Jacksonville Business Professionals, and even the YMCA. Marius and I first met at a Grow Florida gala event that happens in Orlando. Really impressive event. A lot of really exciting companies there. And so I got to see firsthand his passion for helping entrepreneurs. Tell us more about how you got involved with GrowFL and what's your mission with getting for getting involved and, and helping those companies? Well, thank you. First of all, what an honor to be here with you, Dash and, and Michelle, for your first episode. It's it's humbling and an honor to to have that opportunity. So GrowFL, you know, it's where we met last year and it's really a marketplace of unique resources and driven resources that exist in the Florida market and focus exclusively on helping you know, second stage business owners with resources, with creating connectivity and ultimately opportunity to, to succeed. So I got involved really because a dear friend of mine has been part of this association for frankly uh, over a decade. And our mission at Sawgrass, you know, and vision was tailored to help these companies that GrowFL is looking to serve, which are second stage. And one might ask what a second stage company is. I was um, about to ask that. Thank you. Uh, sure, Michelle. <laughs> it's really any, it's industry agnostic and it's really any company that has 750,000 of revenue or more, typically up to a hundred million, okay. and then employs full time, six people up to 150. So that's, if you look at the statistics, this 13 and a half percent of the Florida businesses and yet employs 35% of the entire workforce. So it's a pretty wow. big chunk of our workforce that services them and it has the impact on our community. So that is Grow FL in a, in a nutshell. So sounds like the second stage company is kind of a, in a unique place in its uh, life cycle and has unique kinds of challenges. That's why you have to have an organization that works in specifically with them. So what, what have you observed working both in, in your company, Sawgrass Finance, but also through GrowFL, what's unique about these businesses? What are the challenges that they have that startups or larger companies maybe don't have? Yeah, so a, a very good question. A little background about GrowFL. It was started by Edward Lowe Foundation, who Edward Lowe was the person that put sand in a box. I always think that I was born too late, but I, that's another <laughs> one. I, I, I helped grow some of that billionaire. <laughs> So, you know, looking back for his journey, what was the hardest stage? And he realized the first stage, you know, it's startup. Everybody's yeah. excited what you're doing and trying to help any way they can. The second stage, it's where you hit this, you know, hockey stick where you grow like pretty fast. You employ a lot of people, yet you don't know what you don't know. And I think as an entrepreneur myself of a young business, fairly, it's mentorship. You don't know what you don't know. Who do you listen to, right? You go to a lot of platforms and everybody's trying to offer you their services and they really want to help you. But who do you listen to? So GrowFL right. has, you know, Edward Lowe thought of this going back to the second stage where he felt that is the absolute most difficult because you, you change the fastest yet. You don't know what you don't know. You don't know what resources to employ and whatnot. And so you get to the third stage. Once you get to the third stage, you have the money, you know, the people, then you can really do what you want. So second stage, what I found the most, you know, common that people need is really peer to peer experiences. I yeah. think, mm -hmm. you know, what, this is what I'm dealing with, how you dealt with that. If you're ahead of me, you know, I might not do it exactly how you did it, but I get to hear others 
that are in my perspective and, and my issues and really decide how to go from there. Now, Grow Fair complements them with resources of, of trusted advisors like myself, you know, and they provide a, a fractional service to your needs that you need then. But it really at the at the roots of 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 of, of it is really creating this peer-to-peer marketplace where you get to share battle stories, you know, what you're going through and how you fixed it and so forth. Because listening to other peers might make more sense than me trying to tell you how to fix something. Right. I'm still selling you something. So is that on the GrowFL website, there's a couple different things that GrowFL has programs for. So they have that CEO roundtable, I think mm-hmm. it's called. Yes. Is that what that is? Is the CEOs of these companies getting together? That's one of the programs. Yeah, so they have, uh, you know, a multitude of programs. That's one of them, right? That they try to facilitate a, a group of CEOs to come together and, and share their, you know, experiences in a more tight knit community. Now, as a GrowFL platform, it's kind of open forum, but it isn't. It's open to any CEO that shows up to a social event, to a meeting, to so on. But the, the roundtable is more where you get it to under NDAs, and then you open up actually mm. a lot more than you should to the general public. I, I have a question, just to kind of put things in perspective for those of us that are, are either listening or watching. You mentioned GrowFL. That, of course, would be Florida. We are here right. in Jacksonville recording at studio podcast suites where we do a lot of our recording. Jacksonville is is where we have a lot of guests come in. And I wanted to clarify, is GrowFL only for Florida businesses or do you work with any business here in the U.S.? Can you give yeah. us an idea of scope? Yes, yeah, a good question. While the Edward Lowe Foundation, I think they, they're breaking up other state with similar institutions, Grow Affiliates exclusively for businesses that are located in Florida. Now, okay. if they sell elsewhere, but their headquarters or offices are here, then that is, you know, someone that we can serve, but it's it's mainly businesses based out of Florida. Okay. And that kind of brings me to my other question. If, if someone is not in Florida, mm-hmm. they may think, okay, well, Florida's Disney and beaches. Mm-hmm. So it's hospitality and tourism. Right. I'm not in those industries. What what could I possibly learn from this episode that that might relate to me? Tell us about all the other industries well, that much, you work with yeah. here in Florida. Florida's a vibrant state for business. It Talk really is. And right. What an incredible question. So a, a lot of people don't know that this is a very vibrant, you know, state when it comes to industry and very friendly to yeah. to startups and companies that are trying to to grow very business it is friendly the, if florida was a, a country on its own it would be the 14th largest economy in the world think about that so it, it's it's just in a vibrant state yet as it is today the number one expert from florida is still air there's still a lot of trucks that come into florida and live and leave empty so therefore, there's, you know, the, the state has the goal of by 2030, which is only six years away from now, to be the 10th largest economy in the world if it was sitting, if it will be on its own. So a well, lot of these resources, I'm <laughs> sorry, go ahead. Let me make sure I understand that for just a second here. If the trucks are leaving empty, that means people are selling into Florida. Right. But not necessarily selling out of Florida. Am I understanding that? So thank the opportunity there. Uh-huh. Right. Are you listening? So this is what, you know, the, the grow FL that, that the Florida makes, the, the uh, First Coast Manufacturing Association, the yes. Florida Chamber of Commerce. All of these associations are really looking to get infrastructure ready, to get resources ready. So if you're a business in the cold of Colorado, why not live in the free state income tax of, of, of Florida? where shoveling sunshine is a lot easier than uh, <laughs> shoveling snow. And sand, so, too. <laughs> right? And, you know, this is what uh, the excitement comes from, me getting involved with the likes of Grofeld. That's it's awesome. It's the opportunity that's really ahead that yeah. is yet to be here. But one of the interesting things is also Grofeld has been around for s- s- over a decade now, mm-hmm. right? And so there's also been some opportunity to observe the impact that GrowFL has on the companies that it's uh, helped and recognized to see, okay, without this organization and then with GrowFL helping, what happens? So can you talk also a little bit about the impact that, and, and for people outside of Florida, this could be like 
other organizations that are available in your state that support these businesses. But what has been some of the results that you've seen from Grow a Falc, an organization that's been working here in Florida for about 12, 12, 15 years. So now there's some, we should be able to see those seeds that were planted, that how they sprouted. What, what has been the impact? Yeah. Well, very good question. And, uh, you know, well, data shows us the companies that have been involved into a Grow a like, and like you said, there's others in different states and there's many more in our state companies participate you know participation shows that they grew three times faster by being into a peer-to-peer a, a marketplace similar to this and an roi of nine dollar you know for every dollar they put in wow um, so that shows you the power of collaboration of yeah. opening yourself to others that are in, in your shoes as second stage is early on still and that results in great jobs created. I mean, ultimately, you are making a huge impact in the community by not growing your business, but by hiring more, which yeah. helps the rest of us. And just learning from your peers. I think that helps all of us. Personal professional development, two things that I'm, I, I believe in wholeheartedly. Mm-hmm. And something like this, it, it, it's good for everyone involved. Absolutely. Yeah, and, you know, Michelle and I ourselves, just a quick note on us, you know, we, for what type of businesses that we have, which is right now independent, a small business consultant, consulting category businesses, we got involved immediately with both our businesses in a peer network of people having similar businesses mm-hmm. where we meet and we talk about all our problems and we share uh, experiences and problem solve things. Like just a little because- master mind like a little mastermind because you know a little ceo roundtable just because it's so you know you you run into so many things that you don't have answers for even if like michelle you've been in business for 15 years still you want to be talking to other ceos who have some sort of similar business business stage or maybe operating a sim but if you're operating in the same industry sometimes they're competitors and they might right. not be open to sharing or right. maybe they're your customers and they're not open to sharing but if you find a group like grow fell where they're breaking people in from different industries but with some similar some similarities like life stage you can get that more trusted exchange of information more kind of open kimono you might say right. like here's the things that actually happened here's the right. actual you yeah. know and and be able to have those conversations without judgment but for the purpose of learning so it, it can be done at any stage and every stage is yeah. useful regardless of what industry you're in, if you're selling to the same market, to the same end customer, you may be meeting completely different needs, but you need to know that customer. And you may not know anything about their habits regarding the other services or products that that that, that CEO sitting across the table from you provides. But getting to know another aspect of that customer, another layer, can only help your business. You do not know what you do not know. That's exactly right. So I have here your business card and it says funding the growth of American entrepreneurship. I love that slogan. What does that mean? What that means is that anybody that has a dream can accomplish it because this country is so mighty and that comes with the really access to capital. We all know that, you know, if you need money, you go to a bank. Well, that's a good start. But if that doesn't happen, we're your stage, it's, it's in need of, of money. What do you do? So we're looking forward to, to serve the misfits. Think of the, uh, uh ruled off the Reno reindeer, the, the island of <laughs> yeah. unwanted toys. We're the island the of misfits. unwanted loans, the misfits. <laughs> so if you walk into a bank institution and you're told no, because your business might be too young, undercapitalized, limited track record, that's not the end of the world. We're looking to meet those opportunities to offer leverage, to offer an option where once you get your business off the ground, it's now second stage, right? You have constant revenue that could go higher. We're looking to meet that moment to offer you a product that it's based on your character, your collateral, which is tradable assets like receivables, right? You sell a product, you sell a service. But if you want to scale, you really have to offer terms to your clients, right? Mm-hmm. Nobody wants to pay you up front anymore. Right. And what do you do? Because if you offer 30 days, if you're lucky, if you offer 60, 90 days, yet you have to make payroll, what do you do? Well, you come to people like us that, you know, are looking at this as good people, good product, good processes, good plan to grow. And then we meet the moment for a period of time. We're not long-term yet. Once, you know, you, you go from, you know, non-bankable, our goal is to really grow, help you grow, but also make you bankable. We understand that we're not in this long term, yet we're here to give you the capital 
you need without diluting your business to grow and become bankable. So going back to this term, second stage company, where in the growth process of a company does Sawgrass Finance really help a company with, with that transition? And where does, you, you mentioned this, that a company might not be bankable yet. Mm-hmm. And of course, you know, some, some people do the startup route where they're fundraising and they're giving away equity. But the reality is the actual, the vast majority of businesses in the United States are bootstrapped. They're funded by mm-hmm. the entrepreneur, maybe their direct team, if they're lucky to have some advisors and some other uh, roles, but they're actually not capitalized right. through VC funding or angel investors, maybe maybe some family and friends type of stuff. Right. But so, so I think that's, that's an important thing to know, but yeah, where in the stage of growth do you come in? And then when does when does a bank typically come in so that people understand a little yeah. bit of the, the, the landscape? I guess a good example or illustration would be think of us as, you know, the Canada and Mexico of North America. In other words, if you're a startup and you have limited track record, you, you extinguish the money you raise from family and friends, angel investors and so forth. Yet you don't want to dilute yourself anymore, right? Because you always get a check that runs out. We meet the moment where, you know, the top, the can, Canada portion, young businesses, undercapitalized, fast growing, especially. That's where we meet. Also, we could also serve businesses that, you know, are, they've been around for a while. They've been, you know, in turnaround mode and they're not bankable because they're, you know, declining trends, declining, you know, sales and so forth. That's Mexico. And I don't want to sound negative about Mexico, but, you know, think of that as the top yeah. and the bottom. The banks really want to be in the middle. Whereas the U.S. think of where it's it, safe. where it's safe and there's not a lot of volatility and there's not a lot of, you know, big swings, right? We're okay with uh, hockey sticks up, especially because we're always leveraging the liquid assets. So we follow your assets. We don't follow your cash flow projections. We follow your assets. Think of this. If this is bottle, which is full, the bigger the bottle it gets, the more money you can borrow from us. The more money you borrow from us, the more money we make as well. So it's a win-win for all. And then... The processes that we instill in you and in the management of, of risk is really making a non-bankable business bankable by, by in, you know, banking standards when it comes to reporting and, and so forth. So you also help them with the, you said you're putting in some processes, getting them to a standard of managing the risk. Tell, yeah. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah. So uh, to your point earlier where we asked, you know, what do you see mostly in second stage businesses? I would say that early on second stage businesses, the good people, good product, they, they found success, good plan, right? There's mm-hmm. opportunity out there. But the one that's really lacking is processes. Why is month end necessary? Why, you know, reporting, you know, is, is good to have it on time? You know, it's really making you aware. If you close the month, you know, three months later versus uh, two weeks later, you know if you made money or you lost money. And if you lost money, where did you lose it? It's easy to spot the weaknesses of that business. So certain processes that, you know, we instill is just that, right? And getting you used to reporting to us. And it's kind of a hands-on approach to, to risk management versus a bank where it says, give me a report once a month. We're more frequent and we're okay with you not having them in the beginning as long as you're reporting. And so one thing I always mm. see is processes don't exist at the level that a bank has required for when you're early second stage, which is universal. It's not just one or two. So l- l- let me, I, I often um, have that that train that goes uh, sideways <laughs> rather than from point A to point B. So as I'm, I'm listening to the two of you go back and forth, I think, you know, everybody knows that American dream that you mentioned. It, it's kind of your slogan, the American entrepreneur. Right. And Dasha brought up that that word that, entrepreneurs always think of or hear about, or everybody has the opinion of bootstrapping. Mm -hmm. Well, how did you get where you are? I bootstrapped. Do you think that Michael Dell, who started Dell computers Mm -hmm. in his garage, that Bill Gates, who dropped out of Harvard Mm -hmm. (laughs) or Steve jobs, who launched Apple, do people think, Oh, wow, they were a bootstrapper. (laughs) I mean, you may think you, you may go back to that. Yes. But there's that whole gap between starting their product, launching it, there's the whole second stage that people don't think about. That's all that we're talking about here. Because when, when, when Michael Dell built that first computer, do you think he had a spreadsheet with, okay, well, these are the components I purchased. Let me put that in QuickBooks. QuickBooks wasn't around. (laughs) He had all that written on a napkin. So 
With what you're doing with Sawgrass Finance, are you kind of giving those brilliant founders today the the processes, the of course the financial resources? Right. Yeah. So for, first of all, I think we need more garages. I, think that's gonna, <laughs> I need I like, need one of those. Everyone yes. That has a good garage can become a multi billion in this country, and it's probably the only one in the world that offers you that opportunity. But you're right. I think you know what 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 I think it's very important to to know is is the power of leverage. Yes. And it's good to have money to start. It's good not to depend on anybody, but that can only get you so far. So one of the things I ask, you know, younger companies that I meet when they learn about me and I learn their story is that what do you, what do you want to do? You want to run a business or you want to grow a business? Because those are total different things and you can have two different approaches. You know, if you just want to have a lifestyle business by any means, I don't think you need me, but if you're really trying to scale, that's when leverage is really, really powerful because it, it, it uses your company's assets that you keep multiplying. Like Dell, I'm sure he created computers and sold them to Circuit City back in the day or who knew, who knows who else was around, Kmart's of the world. But yet, I don't think he waited to get paid to go out and make more. I think he found leverage very yes. useful to go out and mm -hmm. really sell as much as he could start getting a portion of that money against his receivables and inventory or whatever it's out there and then go out and multiply hire more make more sell more and that's how you scale we all know ebitda stands for something yes and i think when you sell you sell at ebitda you don't sell at net profit so the the interest it's always you know part of that you know that helps you get the appropriate cash flow to really get to the EBITDA as big as possible too. If you want to sell, if you want to just create a lifestyle business, then why not be leverage a good solution for the business? Right. And of course, the other, to tie in Grow FL with Sawgrass Finance, you, you know, S Steve had was. So surround yourself with good people. Absolutely. Surround yourself with thought leaders, with, with your peers. So don't, don't neglect one for the other. The, the peers that you surround yourself with, the knowledge, the other thought leaders, they are just as important capital as that which Sawgrass Finance can provide. Well, so I, I love that you guys actually, you're coaching these businesses also on process as they're going through. So you're not only just providing money at a point where they've already kind of established some process, but you're helping instill some discipline so that their mm -hmm. growth yes. is. What other... And then you're, you are personally also involved in Grow FL, First Coast Manufacturing. So talk about that whole ecosystem of things that you're involved in and how you're using all of that to help the businesses that work with Sawgrass Finance to make sure they have all the support they need. And other than the financial process and the reporting, what other, what other things do you end up mentoring and coaching them through? Well, I'll tell you my three rules of marketing that I learned early on. Rule number one is be seen. Rule number two, be the expert of something. But really number three is my passion, which is be a resourceful person. Let people think of you with everything that they need, not just what you do directly. So by being involved in a community like GrowFL or FCMA or you know, Jacksonville Business Professionals and others, I really have the opportunity to meet other resources that have the same approach of helping before helping. Right? If you're my borrower and you have a need for finding a new CPA or a fractional CFO or a new insurance person, I want you to think of me first. I want to yeah. be that person that says, well, talk to, you know, this person that it might be able to help you and so forth. So it's really giving me the opportunity to accomplish our vision, which is people, product, plan, and partnerships. Partnerships, it's something that, you know, uh, it's extremely valuable for in everything we do. We want to be able to help holistically our borrowers and, mm -hmm. and not just providing them working capital. So putting on now your hat as uh, an entrepreneur who started a company, who's growing your own company and who has a, a lot of leadership role within that company. So talk a little bit about your company's stage of growth and what you're learning as you're growing your company that it has also translating into lessons for your customers. I think we said it earlier a little bit, which is you don't know what you don't know. Mm -hmm. And to me, it's, it's, it's extremely important to be surrounded by the by people that know more than I do. I think that's that's critical to my success if you know and to my mission to to get to the mountaintop. I would say that my really my goal for Sagas Finance is really to provide a sophisticated option that 
if you go to a market like New York or Dallas or or California, you know, typically you find what we do very frequently. What we do, it's not new to a lot of people's ears. It happens that we're the first direct asset-based lending firm in Jacksonville. So, Marius, tell us a little bit about what what your growth plans are, where where you're going to take it from now. How, how are you going to scale your business? Very good question. So, partnerships mm-hmm. and being intentional. It's really the word for 2024, and I think will be for a long time for Sawgrass, being intentional. It's it's about how do we add value to our partners? And when you add, do add value first, it comes back tenfold. Our partnerships start with, you know, from local banks to local fractional services, which all go back to GrowFL exist, mm-hmm. to the regional ones. When it comes to a bank partnership, a business walks into a bank when they need cash. They don't think of Googling Sawgrass Finance asset-based lending. Yet, if, if that banker partner presents them with the plan to be bankable, we want to be part of it. And we want we understand our role here. We're not the pretty girl to take a prom. We get it. But if you come Friday night, you don't have a girl to take the prom, then we'll be happy to go with you. <laughs> and help you, you know. And then when you get back to you know dance with the person you intended to do so, then we're happy to let you go. This so, this reminds me of the Friends episode, the backup plan. <laughs> you go to the punch bowl. <laughs> we are a backup plan. We, we don't pretend not to. But it's really creating strong partnerships with the resources that, you know, people tend to go out and ask for the help that we can provide. What's been the reception and it, it, as you guys have started to grow and build those partnerships here? Uh, it's It's been very interesting, I would say, coming from a different market that it's more based on transactions to a market like Jacksonville where, if I could put a mantra on it, would be that nobody cares how much you know until they see how much you care. And Theodore Roosevelt said that, and I would say that is such a wonderful, you know, description of how this market is. Nobody cares how much you know until they know you're a good guy or you're a good gal. And once you do get the trust to deliver to people, then they really are seeking you out and seeking your advice and your resources and so forth. So I'm really blessed to call this market a home. We're the only one that does what we do, but we don't take that for granted either. We focused on showing how much we care and how much we want to help before we even do so. I mean, the last three years, frankly, have been probably the most challenging for my industry where there was so much liquidity in the market. Yeah, we didn't lost a beat showing how much we care, although the transactions wasn't at the level perhaps any business would, would expect to have in the beginning. So I won't change a thing about it because this is what's so beautiful about Jacksonville and why I think this is the place for us to be long term. I think that I think that's a common thread. I don't know if it's the 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 change in societal expectations, if it's maybe a generational thing. I'm from Columbus, Ohio. I was raised there. I went through my 20s there and I had to leave there. Wonderful city. Wonderful city, go Bucks. <laughs> but I ran into somebody I knew everywhere, everywhere. For me, it was too small of a town. I wanted to go someplace where I was a little bit more anonymous. Atlanta is where I ended up. You were anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> and it got to the point where I was too anonymous. Yeah. You didn't have that personal connection. You were just another face in the crowd, another car on the street. And there's a lot of cars on the street. Mm. And now I'm going into another phase of my life. Um, looking at relocating to the Jacksonville St. Augustine area. Awesome. Because it's 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 a community with heart. It's, it's a, a community small, where people a, care. Yeah. You can build connections. I already have more meaningful um, recent business connections in Jacksonville than I've made new meaningful business connections in Atlanta in the past five years. Wow. And I have, I have a huge client base in Atlanta. But a lot of it is kind of a, you know, serving a need rather than serving a purpose. Right. It's and a I, big, want to, I want to serve purposes. Yes. Here is a big, small town. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be happy to have you full time very soon. I'm excited. And I'm going to get involved. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. Atlanta is a wonderful place. I, I would never pass up my experience being there. Go dogs. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> but yeah, Jacksonville is a wonderful place. What you're doing with Sawgrass Finance and with Grow Florida, and we haven't really talked about the other organizations that you're working with. Right. It is wonderful as exactly what the SMBs need, startups, scale-ups, yeah. really at every stage of the entrepreneur's journey. Absolutely. Thank you. So before we hop off, there is an upcoming event. And because we're launching right before this event, we should talk about it, which is the GrowFL Gala. Talk, tell us what that is and why people should get excited about that event in Florida. Absolutely. Well, I hope you're planning on attending because it'll mark our one year anniversary since we've oh. met, right? That's, That's where right. we've met. And uh, yeah, so GrowFL 50 Company to Watch Award is, it's a pretty special recognition for businesses in the state of Florida, to put a little bit of context, almost 700 businesses were nominated and only 50 made the cut. It happens that wow. you last year with your former employer were there, but it's, it's an amazing celebration of success. And kind of to tie it back into GrowFL is they're looking to provide opportunities to, to network with other CEOs. They're looking to provide you support. Yet they're looking to celebrate your success at the same time. And Sawgrass Finance is a proud platinum and after party uh, for this year's gala. So we have mm. a promise to have a good party after the gala. So I hope you guys plan to attend and the show will be a good time. Event not to be missed. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for coming on to our show. For our listeners out there, links to Grow FL, as well as a couple example organizations in other states, as well as to Sawgrass Finance, who might be your partner for your scaling financial needs, um, are all going to be in the show notes. And please check out, there's a really helpful resource that Marius provided us that actually compares different lending structures. And I've never seen anybody lay it out so clearly, talking about what's required, the cost structure. So if you are not familiar with lending, but you think that's something that's your company is approaching a point where you need to start looking into it. This is going to help you get a really nice overview of that and start learning a little bit about this area, which is, of course, very important for all companies to be thinking about and all entrepreneurs to be learning about. Even if you're more technology focused or marketing focused entrepreneur, you still are going to have to learn the financial side of your business much better. And so there's some really great resources here to help you start understanding the terminology. That's awesome. Well, we want to thank you so much for joining thank us you. today, Marius. Now, I'm, I'm quite certain that you found incredible value in today's episode, and we are so happy to provide that for you. If you did, if there's certain things that you found extremely beneficial, please share this episode with a friend that might be able to gain some value as well. Refer someone to, to also follow us on with our future podcasts, and we'll let you in on a little secret. Coming up, you're also going to be invited to and office hours, complimentary, that you can come pick our brains, ask us anything that we can provide you value, and look for that information coming probably in the next two weeks or so. Go, Go, Grow is available across all major podcast platforms and on YouTube.